All right, everybody, happy Tuesday. Welcome to Online Oil Camp. Today, I'm going to be uh, the featured speaker here. <laughs> um, and I hope everybody joins in, of course, on this essential oils and the brain class. Um, many people on this call might have seen my I Am Fabulous class. That was a little while ago. Um, it's, it's taken a long time for me to forget my oregano and my <laughs> that sensation. Um, this class may have some similarities in that our brain is our command center um, for everything. And our brain is connected to our emotions. Our commo emotions are um, connected to our physical health. And our physical health, of course, is connected to things like chronic pain, um, disease process, all um, pretty much just our lifestyle and behavior. So the brain is like a big topic to take on. Um, and so there might be some similarities and that's just because you kind of can't separate the brain um, from those other topics. So has anyone ever noticed you have a thought and I don't know, an hour or two later, miraculously, your, either your body responds to the thought you had or, I don't know, something in your environment. So, for example, I don't know, the people that call in sick but aren't sick, I know that's nobody here. But <laughs> let's say we played hooky one day and we decided to call in sick and lo and behold, two hours later, you actually do get sick. Has anyone, has anyone had any kind of weird situations like that where something you thought may be manifested in a physical way? I think I can add to that by saying yeah. that over the weekend we were with Kimberly. We had um, a brunch at Joseph's. We missed you there, Teresa. You would have loved it. Mm -hmm. we, I showed everybody your tart that you always get when we go there. Um, <laughs> and I've had a really hard um, winter here in Reno. And I have said a few times, and I hope I don't offend anybody, gosh, I'm so sick and tired of living in Reno. <laughs> and I just think this winter was so hard on me that in a way, I think I influenced my own health because of my mental state. Yeah, you're, you were so <clears throat> sick of living in Reno that your body got sick. Physically sick. Of, of Reno, Reno, literally. And yeah, I, I really believe that that could happen. So there's that. Um, mm -hmm. I think sometimes there have been times where I've been uh, driving my car and I've been in traffic and I've had a little anxiety and I can give myself a headache mm -hmm. afterwards. So I've, I've noticed that before. That makes sense. That brings up a good topic. Anyone, I'm sure we all talk about stress headaches, tension headaches, right? You're dealing with something in your environment, maybe kids, maybe family, maybe pets or work and you're just it's such a stressful day that you leave with this horrible migraine and now you're physically ill because it's something you dealt with in your day to day so we know that stress takes a huge toll stress stores itself in the body um and there's there's memories and emotions that are, are that get trapped Mm -hmm. in our body that basically end up becoming, unfortunately, disease processes. So that's what's so amazing. I mean, eating right and living the balanced lifestyle, the wellness triangle that we've been trying to do more in this camp um, really ties it all together with that brain-body connection. Yeah, and I was even thinking it can go the other way. You know, like you've heard about people who have had debilitating illnesses, and there's always this uh, a level of influence of your mental health. You know, mm -hmm. they'll say that you need to remain positive and hopeful mm -hmm. and that that somehow will kickstart totally. yeah, that, that healing. Um, <clears throat> interesting enough for anyone that doesn't know, I work in the cardiac field. Um, we don't really give a lot of this stuff, a lot of attention or any kind of mind. Um, but I did listen to a cardiologist the other day say, um, basically your mindset will also heavily influence your recovery. So, um, you know, we'll go in with mechanical balloons and stents and we open arteries and we help people with heart attacks. Um, and then, you know, maybe they go off to open heart surgery and other situations. Um, but depending on where their mentality is, 
really um, affects their whole recovery and the whole outcome and quality of, of that whole situation. So um, you guys got a handout. It has four pages. It's pretty lengthy and there's probably every oil on there that you can <laughs> potentially think of. Um, so when we said have your oils with you uh, to be ready for anything, I, I think this is an amazing resource for you guys to have always. Um, we obviously aren't going to necessarily talk about every single oil on here because we would be here for probably a year. Um, We'll highlight some. I feel like I was telling Wendy, I feel like a lot of these pages are really amazing to have, especially to hone in on maybe something that you're specifically going through. Um, but I really feel like each page really comes all back to the same theory. And so I feel like almost each page is really, it's not really four pages, it's just one. So we can kind of bounce around. Yeah. And can I also add, um, if anybody has a concern about their, um, their brain health, their emotional health, then, you know, this is a great time to find a protocol so mm -hmm. we can help you put something together. Hi, Amanda. Um, and see if there's something that we can come up with for you. If you're not interested in sharing that with the group, then mm -hmm. you can always reach out to me individually and I'd be happy to, to help you with that. Okay. Absolutely. <clears throat> so. Uh, I'm just going to start off here. Uh, the brain, obviously, it ha it's a big topic, um, but there's four lobes. There's the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. So frontal, of course, is up here in the front, and the occipital is really, it's far back here. Um, and then you have your parietal and your occipital lobe. Each lobe in the brain is responsible for different things. Um, many people, hopefully no one knows anyone with head trauma, but if you do, um, you may notice different things. Linda, um, you may notice different things with someone who has head trauma. Um, I have a cousin who unfortunately dealt with two very crazy traumatic um, situations. They got struck by lightning uh -huh. and they also um, at the same time fell off a struck, like uh, it was like a high, it was a very situation where it was very clear out. There was no rain, no wow. weather really. And so they were out on their camper and trimming branches and getting ready for camping and just kind of out of the blue sky um, got struck by lightning and so got struck by lightning and then fell off that structure and fell and hit their head at the, also um, on concrete and so um, there's brain injuries we have electrical situations going on you have uh, trauma from a certain level and then um, with that you also have um, lack of oxygen to the brain because they need to be resuscitated and that took some time as well. So there's residual effects of the multiple traumas that result in rage and personality changes, um, memory issues, and um, just like motor skills, uh, speech, all kinds of stuff. So just with those variety of traumas without oxygen, with actual physical damage, and I'm sure the electrical part getting hit with the, all of the force of a lightning bolt, you know, you have so many manifestations. So uh, the four lobes, the frontal lobe usually controls reasoning, um, expressive language, motor skills, and a higher, higher level of cognition. Um, so the frontal lobe, it's that rational thinking and self-control. Um, so think like impulse control, things like that. And then the parietal lobe is responsible for like our tactile sensory information. So pressure, touch, pain. Uh, the occipital lobe deals with vision, um, color identification, things like that. And then the temporal lobe is uh, in interpreting sounds and language, uh, the language we hear in the formation of memories. So um, you know, when he had his trauma, obviously, I'm sure there's, there were so many different areas and lobes affected that it really had little bits of symptoms from each section, basically. Um, so 
Wendy was really great about sharing things that she's dealt with this winter uh, in the same conversation that we were having the other day. Um, I personally have been going through a lot of uh, breathing and pulmonary issues. So it, it, yeah, Judy, I know so many people are dealing with respiratory things this season and colds and flus. It's just horrible. Um, and so when I started dealing with the respiratory issues, you know, the first thing my doctor said was, well, you know, there's all these viruses going around and these, these respiratory things and just all the skunk. And, you know, I'm sure you'll be fine. Just kind of like ride it out. It might be a virus. And I kept saying, you know, I'm not coughing. I'm not sneezing. I don't have any sinus issues. I have no drainage. There's nothing going on with my respiratory system in terms of what feels like sickness but I can't breathe and I, I have no idea why. And this has continued for three months now uh, to the point now that I've, I've been in the ER, I've been in emergency, I've been into urgent care, I've been today to a pulmonary specialist, uh, I have to have a CAT scan, there's so many things going on. Um, but one of the conversations that we have had and not that there's not necessarily something going on, but something to think about. My doctor said, have you been experiencing any emotional changes? Are you depressed? Um, Wendy asked me, you know, maybe what, there might be a thought that you're having that might be translating into, I can't breathe. And one of the things I told her and Kimberly and my doctor is I said, I do feel a little bit down. It's cold. It's dry. It's the weather is not so great. And I just, you know, I'd love to do doTERRA full time and not do my job. And I just feel stuck and I just feel like I can't breathe. I can't breathe, <laughs> but I feel like I just can't breathe. And now all of a sudden, you know, I, I cannot breathe. I'm on inhalers and breathing treatments and nothing's really responding. Um, and so what was interesting was they said, well, maybe we should start dealing with the emotional aspect on top of going through all of the exams just to make sure there's nothing going on with your lungs and your heart. Um, it's really great to make sure that you deal with that stuff too. Um, you know, we don't always just want to dismiss it and just say, oh, it's all in your head. And, oh, you're just depressed or you're just down. Um, but it really can be a combination or maybe it could just be, you know, I'm sick of winter mm -hmm. and now I'm, I'm sick mm -hmm. all winter. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I'm just going to read a real quick little article for you. And it says, um, it's called 12 types of chronic pain directly related to emotional states. So it says, is there a connection between emotions and chronic pain? Uh, according to Dr. Susan Babel, um, she's a psychologist who specializes in trauma-induced depression. Emotions have a major impact on your chronic pain. Studies have shown that chronic pain may not only be caused by physical injury, but also a stress and emotional issues. Physical pain functions to warn a person that there is still emotional work to be done. So what does our chronic pain show about our emotional state? Let's take a look. It says the head. We talked about headaches. Headaches and migraines can be caused by everyday stress. A person suffering from chronic headaches should set some time aside for their self, not occasionally, but every day. Relieving the body of stress may help to ease any head pain. Neck may not just be that your kids are driving you crazy. Uh, it may be forgiveness of another person or even forgiveness of oneself. Uh, it is important to think about the feelings, the things one loves about themselves and others to fight this pain. Shoulders, is, pain is a sign that one may be carrying a heavy emotional burden. So you're basically shouldering everything. You have the weight of the world on your shoulders. Um, one thing you can do is, of course, share the load with trusted friends and family. So the article kind of goes a little bit in depth about elbow pain, back pain, hands. Hands, a lack of friends or reaching out may cause pain in the hands. 
Um, one thing they recommend doing is maybe go to lunch with some friends or work associates, try to make new friends and maybe meet actively, try to actively meet new people. Yeah, I love that advice. And that's something that I think we all uh, could spend a little bit more time cultivating friendships. It's a great distraction. <laughs> Especially during this winter yes, and is. in this business. It so is. I love the Thursday wine night. Yes, I love um, that. That's, and I, that's I love my new so pickleball great. classes that I'm taking. <laughs> yeah, I always leave just feeling so excited. It's fun. These little nights. And um, I'm, I'm going to ask you if you can share that article on the online oil camp page and then yeah, everybody and can then kind of take a look at it. Is that okay? We'll have that available for everybody. Absolutely. So um, one of the things that I felt was really interesting is we had talked to Kimberly and she had told me about breaking her leg in the past. And I'm not sure if it manifested in her knee or where exactly she broke her leg, but one of the thoughts, some of the thoughts associated with knee pain and soreness and inability to move your knee is that you're stuck, you can't move on, you're afraid of life, or your future is dark. She had mentioned how she just was kind of in a transition wanting to leave Reno, and she just wasn't loving where the community had gone, and she felt stuck, and she wanted to do other things, and then she broke her leg. And, and then she ended up moving. So it kind of catapulted yeah. her to where she wanted to go. But there is sometimes an emotional combination uh, tie to even injuries that you do sustain, like a broken leg. So if we jump on into the handout, I'm going to go ahead and hit share. Let's see if it's still there. And so there's that one might be. Let's find is that the first page? page? Okay, that's the first one. And you just hit share. Awesome. Great. And, and just kind of move all this stuff around. Just move people out of your way. Perfect. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So this lovely handout, Essential Oils and the Brain, Complements of Aroma Tools. Um, you can see pulse and reflexology points. So we talk a lot about putting oils on the bottoms of our feet. Um, and we deal with reflexology and acupuncture. So what's really amazing is you see those two little points on the bottom of your big toes. Um, you can see those are the reflexology points for the brain. So as we go through today's handout, or when you're in your free time or alone time, tomorrow and you're dealing with something specific, you can target those two points on the bottom of your toes and put the oils that may be recommended for whatever you're going through, whether it's focus, whether it's stress, worry, depression, um, things that might even be associated with something that you're dealing with physically, like a stomach ache and, you know, um, a headache, things like that. You also see there's neck pulse points on the front of your neck, which is kind of interesting. It makes like a triangle uh, or a, actually it'll be the bottom one there, the bottom of the triangle. And then on the back of your neck, right below the bottom of your skull is that top point. So we can do a topical application there. You can go ahead and apply directly to the skin like most people um, do. You talked about sometimes oils are very powerful, and so you recommend putting those oils not directly over the back of that spinal cord, oh, right. but maybe to the side. Oh, right. right. That was so interesting. So there's um, a spot right in the center base of your skull, which is going to be that point right. that and we see on the page. Right. They thought that perhaps that was a little too close to your nervous system and it would cause some alarm to the system. And so if it's a sort of an invigorating oil, like think about peppermint, how when you put that on your skin, you're like, Wee! yeah. <laughs> and so for some people that center back of the skull, is just a little too sensitive. And so it was recommended that you put it right 
uh, on the on the, on the um, man man mastoid that's the one mastoid process I say that all the time mm -hmm. mastoid process is that little bony landmark right behind your ear and it might be a little bit more gentle on your system so when you're thinking about the application depending on what oil you're using instead of putting it on that point like the oregano on the top of my head <laughs> uh, maybe put it over here and anyone though if you've ever hit that spot you can feel that real bone there um, I accidentally hit that spot one time on the side of my car door and I almost passed out. So that's sensitive too, but it's, it's off to the side and so it's a little bit more um, gentle. So we have essential oil effects on the brain. Influ it um, affects mood and your emotions as we've talked about. It supports healthy brain function. Oils protect neurons. Neurons are cell transmitting nerve impulses and penetrate cell membrane. What's really amazing is we've talked about the oils because of their familiarity of their cellular um, structure, you can go ahead and the oils penetrate those cellular membranes. So things like viruses, that's why we get relief from some of our oils instead of pharmaceutical synthetics. You have um, oils protect against the effects of stress chemicals. So think cortisol, I know copaiba, according to Nicole, our pharmacist says um, copaiba balances those cortisol and um, cortisol levels. Yeah, and that's a great energy. one to take if you're dealing with daily anxiety, daily stress. And it's so easy to take. It's in a soft gel. Mm -hmm. um, I take, typically I take two of those with Serenity soft gels at night before I go to sleep. But you could take those during the day too. Mm -hmm. Has anybody else taken Copaiba soft gels uh, just during the day? I don't see Julie on here, but maybe if I scroll over here. I think Julie was. We, yeah, hi yeah. Julie. So Julie was. Do you want to... Can you tell us, Julie, can you tell us what your experience with the Copaiba soft gels has been? Um, I take three at night before bed for sleep. And I have done that for a while now, you know, since convention. And I'm actually cutting back because I'm so tired all the time. I don't, I don't know what's wrong, but I'm just so tired all the time. So I'm now cutting back my Copaibas to two at night for sleep. Um, I was taking it in the morning for inflammation okay. support, um, but I'm not doing that because I'm doing turmeric now. Okay. Nice. And you're taking your lifelong vitality. I am. I, you are. And so I always feel like that gives me lots of energy. What about the Mito to Max? Are you I am doing Mito to Max and I'm doing DDR Prime. Nice. Okay. And how long have you been doing the Mito? Um, just probably since you gave that to me, <laughs> you gave me some, <laughs> the first one was free, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and so you gave me some, um, so it hasn't been that long. I'm going to say maybe a couple months. Okay, okay. Um, and then I've been taking DDR prime because, um, Kathy told me, oh, about a year ago, anybody over 50 should be on DDR prime. Mm -hmm. So I take two of those every day. So when I think about people that, this is digressing a little bit, but when they tell me that they don't have much energy, I always think that's always down to your cells. It's a cellular energy. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you talk to a health coach or a nutritionist, they would want you to build that vitality with food. And mm -hmm. so maybe it's yeah. not, a, you know, it sounds a little maybe counterintuitive, but, you know, get some fats in you. Um, you know, yeah, I just read an article um, about that people, you know, my age um, just don't get enough protein. We are way under proteined, mm -hmm. you know, so um, I don't know. I know when I'm not eating enough protein, I am tired. Yeah, maybe, maybe make some nourishing like beef stew, throw something in the yeah. pot. Make it some easy. of it's the weather, you know, I know for me it's the weather. <laughs> I mean, it's the weather. I've even upped my vitamin D trying to get away from that seasonal affected disorder. Well, we had a good walk on the golf course the other day. That felt yeah, it was good. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Julie. Thanks uh -huh. for sharing. Yeah. So I love that. I mean, usually your body craves sugar and carbs when you're tired because right. it's trying to build that energy. Right. But then I experienced a huge crash. 
because that sugar just affects me in the worst possible ways. Um, but I do feel sometimes refreshed from a decent, not sugary, carby kind of meal. Mm -hmm. um, what's really interesting is I think doTERRA does an amazing job with the Lifelong Vitality, the DDR Prime, the Mito2 Max, all of those in those little capsules that are already um, pre-measured and figured out how to do it as the daily dose. On your handout, you'll see on the bottom corner recommended ideal amounts when it comes to internal application. And this is more of um, not dealing with what doTERRA has done for us, which is so helpful. Um, but if you're wondering maybe how many drops of oil are ideal and how often and for how long, we've talked about oregano isn't great beyond two weeks of an internal application being a natural antibiotic. Um, you can see an internal ideal amount of two to four drops um, every four to six hours and <coughs> maybe 24 drops in a 24 hour part. So um, I've had people ask me, if I'm making my own supplement, I'm taking all these oils internally. Um, I don't know necessarily that you can overdose. Um, but it is really interesting um, that they kind of, this is a really great guideline to maybe follow if you're, if you're creating a bunch of different concoctions. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who it was. I don't know if it's somebody on this call. Maybe it was somebody else I met with. They said they just took all the oils that they could possibly take and ended up, I think, most likely having a huge detoxification mm -hmm. reaction, and so they felt super sick. Um, but that's more, I think, just of a detox. So this is just a recommended so guideline. It's a recommended. Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily a rule. Those copiva soft gels, I think, are only two drops. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I take a lot of things every four to six hours. Right. So this is kind of awesome. Well, I think getting back to those copiva soft gels, when I um, was asking Julie, uh, what I was looking for was if somebody was taking them, not at night to sleep, mm -hmm. but if you were taking them during the day, because what I notice about the Copaiba soft gels, when I do take it at night is I feel very, I can feel my body just go, <sighs> mm -hmm. and my brain just relaxes. I feel the same. And I think you could probably take that if you were the type of person that daily felt like you were dealing with anxiety mm -hmm. and maybe overwhelm. Yeah. Um, you could try that. And we do have a full line of emotional oils from our emotional aromatherapy kit and things like console if you're dealing with grief, motivate if you need to be encouraged. But I do feel that that's a very personal choice. Mm -hmm. And rather than just prescribing an essential oil to somebody that's dealing with emotional issues, I always think it's a good idea for them to sit down with all of those oils and just mm -hmm. give everything a good sniff mm -hmm. because you never know. They're so um, personal. You know, you can have an yeah. aroma that you think is great. That really sets me off. Yeah. <laughs> like patchouli. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but not everybody, not everybody does. does. Right. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? Or comments? Or comments? <clears throat> or personal stories? Um, I don't want to steal the call. Yeah, no, no, it's good. So, are we looking? Um, Wendy, as long I've been doing the um, skinny jeans formula, which has the copaiba in it, mm -hmm. and I take those twice a day once in the morning, one at night with the other oils. I think there's six oils that I put together in capsules and take them twice a day. And I haven't noticed that I've been overly tired because of those. In fact, I think I feel better. Oh, that's nice. Good, 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 good. Yeah, I wouldn't think you'd be tired. I mean, I'm taking them specifically to sleep, and so I'm mm -hmm. combining them with serenity. Mm -hmm. But it's good to know that you can take them and just for somebody that's dealing with overwhelm mm -hmm. to maybe help you just settle in mm -hmm. a little bit more. I, I wondered if that was a good product for people. I get the impression yeah, that it is. I think yeah. so. I don't really Thanks, think you London. can go wrong with it. So let's see. You want to go to the next one? Maybe I'll stay right here for just a couple okay. seconds here. So um, 
we have our aromatic application, everybody um, that, you know, breathes it in or diffuses. So that's really great for those aromatic molecules binding to the receptors, receptors through that neural olfactory pathway. So it goes right into that limbic system and affects your whole mood. Uh, your topical application, and then of course we talked about that internal application, um, delivering those antioxidants, which really goes into almost like that diet portion and digestion. Mm -hmm. um, the stomach, believe it or not, the gut, 90% of the body's serotonin and other feel-good chemicals are produced in the gut. So um, going back to nutrition, I mean, that's taking care of your stomach and feeding yourself not just oils and supplements, but also really quality food to support that gut. Um, you know, that's where a lot of that mood and brain gut is going to transform. Yeah. I think I see that every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking about my husband. Don't say anything. Um, but I think when people have um, a gut issue, it does really influence their state of mind. Mm -hmm. And if you can balance the gut, you can balance their emotions. And then with the yeah. gut as well, you have the leaky gut, which mm -hmm. translate into autoimmune. So yeah. really it's all kind of one vicious, vicious cycle into the disease processes mm -hmm. or, or the alternative health and wellness. Right. But you're also thinking about the body as a whole. Mm -hmm. So you're, when you're taking your essential oils, you might be taking it for just one issue. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see if I can come up with an example. So maybe peppermint for um, a headache, let's say, mm -hmm. but peppermint's also going to help your digestive system. So you're getting the benefit of both. When you take a pharmaceutical, it's usually pinpointing just one particular issue. And then usually causing side effects <laughs> right. rather than Right. Positive bonus. Right, right, right. I always like to think of these things like, oh, it's just a bonus. Yeah. It's like, oh, this oil is great for this and all of these millions other things. But <laughs> right. then you have a pharmaceutical where it's like, oh, it's really great for this and bad for all right. of these other things. So um, that's just really amazing. I feel like it's like a win-win and there's, I mean, I really can't think of any side effects from using oils, really. I, mean, I saw something on Facebook a while back and it was, um, why is it that pharmaceuticals always have negative uh, side effects. Why can't they have pharmaceuticals that have, you know, eternal happiness mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> spontaneous orgasms? <laughs> well, I don't know about the orgasms, but yeah. the essential oils don't have any of those negative side effects. Right. I mean, think like if you listen, it says may cause gambling addiction. Oh, yeah. And it's like, what is that even have to do with it? And driving while you're sleeping. And, yeah, and like, okay. And usually the side effect is what you're kind of also trying to combat. Um, <laughs> the doctor prescribed a depression medication and it says may cause depression. Yeah. And it's kind of like, so what are we doing here? Right. Um, I'm going to pull up beyond this I can page. Help you here. I want to go ahead and pull up that nice little body. Hey, you guys, can I ask a quick question? Absolutely. So the, when you talk about the treatment of using like the Copaiba and like, the, Ooh, that was weird. Um, <laughs> the serenity for, um, like the anxiety, Mm -hmm. um, are we talking like acute anxiety? Are we talking extreme anxiety? Or could it be specific to both? Great question. I, I think you can take the Copaiba every day. Mm -hmm. And if you're the kind of person that is having chronic overwhelm, I think that that Copaiba soft gel could take the edge off. Mm -hmm. I'm taking it specifically for sleep. Because I'm, I'm sure that most of us do the same. I think everybody's trying to solve the world's problems right. at two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So what I, when I take the two copaibas and the two serenity soft gels, just right as I'm getting into bed, I can physically feel my body unwind. Mm -hmm. I physically feel go. Ah. <laughs> well, because like I take mine, I do. Um, I put it in veggie caps. I don't by the soft gels personally. Um, Cause I also like to do the diffuse in my hands and breathe it. And I feel like that kind of gives me a little bit of a, I don't want to say an instant relief, but it kind of just starts to toy with things. 
Um, and then I diffuse my serenity because I don't have the serenity soft gels. So I diffuse serenity while I have copaiba. And I've only taken it once during the day. And it seemed like it kind of worked, but I was sick and I just couldn't get to sleep. So it was like, yeah. Right. yeah. But I just don't know if it's like, would you up it if you feel like you didn't feel it enough or something? I don't know. <laughs> Um, I almost would think of combining it maybe with a, another um, Gosh, frankincense, frankincense, things yeah, like that. I noticed. Oh that yeah. Uh -huh. When I first started diffusing, for example, I wanted something to help me sleep, um, and I had serenity, and that was amazing. And then I, I'm a major, major sleepwalker. I have night terrors. I scream. I punch. I run. I mean, it's horrible. You're getting your own room at convention. My poor boyfriend. I, I he doesn't probably want to have me tell the story, but we went on vacation. Vacation. You think, oh my gosh, how fun! You're calm. You're relaxed. No, we had like an itinerary. We had a 5 a.m. start time. Like we were just going and going, and so I was still pretty worked up, and. I was screaming and pointing and I was, he calls it treasure hunting because I, I point and like I'm looking for gold and I like <laughs> ride mine carts and do all these weird things. And at one point he said, I ripped his underwear off <laughs> and I am not a big person. And my boyfriend is definitely bigger than me. <laughs> And I have, he, he says I'm a demon that night and I have this weird strength. He said, I ripped his underwear off and I slung shot it across the room. I can't make this up. I, it's like, so, and, and it's not the first time. I mean, I just am literally, he goes, I, he won't even look at me in the eyes. He says, if I make eye contact, you're a demon. And you start launching at me and yelling and talking, and screaming. And he's like, he won't even look at me if I'm awake. So I upped my serenity um, to, uh, I just went to my oil bag and I kind of intuitively started grabbing things that I felt might be good to mix together. And it turns out that they were all for anxiety and stress and sleep and, and all kinds of things. And so I, instead of adding extra, extra, extra serenity, I started adding vetiver and frankincense and then juniper berry and then it, 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 it copaiba. And by the time I was finished it, like after all this, I had 12 oils, <laughs> but I was noticing a, a change right. and he started asking me, can we get a travel diffuser so that when we go out of town, <laughs> you're not taking his underwear. You're <laughs> not slingshotting my underwear <laughs> and assaulting me. So what I've noticed is maybe sometimes change it up maybe add oils that really blend well together, like frankincense with serenity, maybe serenity, copaiba, and frankincense. Add a couple of drops of each. Um, kind of play with it. And what I've also noticed, and I was talking to my friend's a nurse, and she, we were talking about serenity and copaiba and different sleep aids the, the other day. And we talked about um, what's the super, super common one that you take for jet lag. It's not an essential oil. Oh, like um, melatonin? Or melatonin. She said, you know, melatonin requires you to get a buildup in your body. And so she said, when I take melatonin, I, I have really terrible nightmares for a little while. And then after a few days, it goes away. Because she said, you know, I took Serenity soft gels and I noticed some really bad nightmares. Mm -hmm. And I said, I noticed the same thing. And after about two days, they're gone. And I said, you know, I think it's because in your REM cycle, the human body actually dreams of the most morbid things possible in the whole entire world in our REM sleep, but we don't remember it because that's how our sleep cycles work. Um, and so you get this really restful sleep by like dreaming of all these terrible things. <laughs> and I said, I think with the serenity, you might just not forget those things. And so it's terrifying. Oh. Um, and so I said, but after two days, I feel great. Like I don't have that issue, but mm -hmm. I have to get through that hump. Mm -hmm. And she said, Oh, well, that's how I feel with melatonin. And so I think it's almost the same. You build up a little bit of level in your body with like, even with the oils. And I think that's why it says don't exceed a certain amount in a 24 hour period. Um, because you, you, you build up like a blood level. And so 
Um, you might notice as over the course of days after you've been experiencing maybe that high anxiety after several days, maybe just the combination of doing it daily might help. Or maybe just, I think, changing it up a little bit or adding things may kind of help that acuity. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does to me. Because in math, one and one equals two. Yeah. But when you add one and one essential oils, it equals many. Like it just right. has such a bigger and role. And then by days yeah, on and end, adding it to now the you body. start to get that cumulative level. And now over time, you might, and I think that's why the lifelong vitality works. Over time, you don't notice until you stop. I think most people say, and you don't notice the, the amazing benefits yeah. until you stop because you've now built up 30 days and now you take it away. And right. Now your body's like, oh, I was doing so great. And right. now my levels plummet. Right. I'm just going to turn it down. So I have this little graphic up. Um, you guys, I don't want to ask you like, oh, do you have problems in your genitals? <laughs> um, but if you can see that on the screen, it's like really personal. Thank you for not uh, While we're that. recording and sharing it to everybody, yeah, I have problems in my genitals and I'm going to send this out to everybody. <laughs> so you can kind of look and it, it shows the physical body, it shows the emotional body, and it shows the mental body. And so it's really great that, you know, um, everything starts in our brain and ends in our brain. People like amputees, people that have had limbs amputated, still feel phantom limb pain even when their limb is gone. And that's because the brain is still firing and perceiving physical pain um, firing from that brain. And so you can see how these overlap. So we talked about the knees, um, the physical knees. And then you feel that pain, inability to bend your, and you have sore knees. And then you can see the emotional body is that I'm stuck. I can't move. My future is dark. So you can kind of, and I, I'll post this on um, Oil Camp as well, yeah. along with the article. Um, we can see the legs is the physical body. We feel the rage, sense of injustice and resentment. Um, speaking of broken legs, you have that resentment um things like that going on and then um you can see the emotional mindset behind it i've been cheated on i will not be taken for granted i will not forgive um and so it will be it's kind of interesting when i started having foot pain people said well maybe it's because you don't feel supported and at the time i actually didn't feel very supported um and so there's often an emotional source to your physical injury or pain and so That's this is something you can kind of self look at and see um i i all personally always get throat infections every single year without fail forever um i got one when i lived in la i had it for two months <clears> and it was to the point where they said that we i don't know what to do if we can't fix this uh there's nothing else we can give you but you have horrible infection pulsing through your body um, I couldn't speak. My throat was closed. I had pockets everywhere. It was really terrible. Um, but I was also going through a period in LA where I might have to move back home. And um, I was very fearful. And, and so you can see where that throat kind of connects to the fear. And then it even goes beyond to like, um, not speaking your truth, mm. people say things like that. That's really interesting. So I'll let you guys, um, we'll post that onto the online camp. So if there's anything that you're really curious about, you can kind of maybe correlate those. And we'll just take these last few minutes um, to either go over anything you guys specifically want to address. Want to take a look into this. And we're going to look at those next two to three pages, which really all focus on those healthy habits, brain cell activities. Um, that looks like this one. So we can do that recovery. We can do this one. Okay, I'm just going to make that. Oops. <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm just going to make that disappear. <laughs> She's so slick. Okay. 
<laughs> all right, so here we talked about all the oils that you can use. Remember, and I think everyone um, identifies with the fact that not everybody responds to the same oil. Um, I really may love lavender and somebody else may think that it reminds them of their grandma and they couldn't stand their grandma. <laughs> or um, I have someone at work who freaks out if I wear orange because there was something that happened and she got sick and she could smell citrus. So remember that you have all these oils at your dispense and they all in this instance are great for worry, anxiety, overwhelm, uh, tense, restless, nervous, distress, all those different emotions that go along with that. Um, but not, it's not a one size fits all. I feel like it's a one size fits uh, one or two. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the times my issue is people expect I use essential oils and now poof, yeah, yeah, everything goes away and I'm numb or I'm just like, I don't feel anything anymore. And I don't think there's anything in the world minus like a tranquilizer that makes you feel that way. Mm -hmm. Instantane, even synthetics. So just keep in mind um, consistency every four to six hours, topical, aromatic, and kind of try different things. So you can see basil to chamomile to rosemary and Siberian fir. Um, you can try blends, copaiba, frankincense. They're always, I think, in everything. Those mm -hmm. You can never go wrong if you're only going to have two oils on yeah. hand. Those are probably the best yeah. ones. Yeah. Um, you can try the blends like balance. Um, and then you have serenity there as well. And you can make your own blend there too. And so if you want to make your own nice little roller bottle, let's say you're you're in an environment where you're constantly feeling overwhelmed and like you can't breathe maybe it's it's not a pulmonary thing maybe this would be a great blend of melissa lavender sandalwood ylang ylang and bergamot do you have your um chart that shows the substitutions my chart it's an shows. oil oh you know i think i do let's see I have all yeah, this is the one. Okay. Hand so hand I was hand. just thinking about that Melissa that's on that first one. I think Melissa, I could be wrong. She might have been the one that stood totally by herself. But uh, Melissa is next to Lemon. Oh, perfect. Yes. perfect. So if you didn't have Melissa, which is a little bit of a spendy, mm -hmm. totally worth it. It's a beautiful citrus. But if you didn't have Melissa, you can swap that out with lemongrass. Mm -hmm. There's lavender, ylang ylang. Sandalwood is another one that's really beautiful it comes in a five mil bottle so it's a little smaller and it too is a little spendy it, mm -hmm. we have a hawaiian and an indian version of sandalwood and i love hawaii so i just always buy the hawaiian i know that's the first um, one i got and so let's see if you didn't have sandalwood. sandalwood i know we had one in the past that you couldn't substitute and let's see I hopefully it's not that one Anyway, you can look on your doTERRA.com site and you can see that the um, oil chemistry wheels, they're under the advocates and then like we go flyers. into oh, flyers. Here. Yeah. Turmeric is by itself. Sandalwood, that's the one. Sandalwood is a alcohol and it's a Santalol. And it's kind of its own. And it's a stabilizing oil. And so it stands all by itself. And I think this is what we ended up with, with the I Am Fabulous sandal, what was in all of those. And uh -huh. I think that's why we, I remember it. in yeah. cedarwood. Cedarwood sits by itself. Um, but patchouli, cedarwood, vetiver, and sandalwood are all stabilizing oils. So even though we're not going to find something that has exactly the same chemical component of sandalwood, you do have its kind of like brothers and sisters. Uh, so you have its next door neighbor. Vetiver, cedarwood, patchouli, okay. and even turmeric and spike nard. So, so that, that makes sense to everybody, right? That you we talked about this with Amanda. I think it was the basil oil she said that she didn't have. And so if you don't have something, you can always look on the oil chemistry wheel that's in the doTERRA site right in your front office. Mm -hmm. And you can look for that substitution. Um, and I love that Tara's actually 
um, laminated them. She copied them off and laminated them. And so I knew that you had them right here in your bag. I, you know, so I guess easy peasy. Just, yeah. <laughs> um, and then Melissa is a soothing oil. And actually, <clears throat> even though there's really nothing that's quite like Melissa, copaiba, black pepper, ylang ylang, ginger and cedar wood are all on those soothing ends. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot of those um, popping up repeatedly in all of these categories. Right. So um, that's why I consider most of these pages one, because you're going to see Copaiba probably in almost all the categories. Um, Clary Sage pops up under worry and anxiety, as well as recovery with healthy habits. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what else are we going to see pop up here. Yeah, and the I grounding love the one whole pops food up a lot. Source. So that's your uh, lifelong vitality, uh, VMZ, the vitamins and minerals. So that mm -hmm. comes up, whole foods, whole foods, mm -hmm. uh, focus and concentration, probiotics. So there's that gut health that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. And I have someone who's, um, not that I suggest that you just don't take your physician's word you know, and go rogue because there's things that you just, we don't know about and you can't just stop cold turkey. There's just a lot of things that go along with other wellness and health. Um, but I have someone who takes off lifelong vitality and um, is almost like bipolar, almost has like that chemical kind of imbalance for lack of a better word. And when they're off of the lifelong vitality, they have very high highs and very low lows. And when they're on lifelong vitality consistently, it's more completely even. Yeah, feel. yeah. And so that's really just with that and not with a synthetic yeah. heavy hitter expensive right. pharmaceutical. Um, and I'm going to add that I have somebody on our team, um, just a, a very handsome, bright man, um, and he had a terrible accident. He was pushing a um, ATV up a ramp onto the back of a pickup truck and the ramp failed and the ATV came back on him and he had a very severe head injury. You'd never know it now. I mean, he's wow. totally recovered, um, but it was almost as if he'd had a stroke. Mm -hmm. And so he lost his memory and he lost his ability to speak and he couldn't walk. Um, yeah. And he swears by lifelong vitality. He has the loyalty rewards program, the LRP set up. And that's the only thing he buys every month is the lifelong vitality pack. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And it really works for him. So um, what I love about lifelong vitality, and I'm sure most people are on it. So I think believe it has the 12 essential oils that has frankincense in there. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of those already in there that are recommended on here. Um, I think <coughs> healthy should be simple. And I think that a lot of people don't do a lot of these things because it's sometimes time consuming, labor intensive. Um, we're just not programmed from the day we walk out of the womb. Um, to just go and like line all of our stuff up and do all these things before we start our day. So those are really great and easy ways to just get these things in. If you're really not great about making in capsules or putting them on internally or under the toes. So I think that's an amazing option that it's just, I mean, doTERRA takes the guesswork out of it. So yeah. that's something that's, I think mostly in all of these, if it's not, it should be. Um, we talked about the blend for worry and anxiety. And then the blend, it looks like for depression, you can see on that same page is bergamot, clary sage, ginger, melissa, and orange. And so we know ginger is on that soothing side of the spectrum. Bergamot is very uplifting. It's also great for your skin. Mm. Um, so that blend um, in a diffuser or in a roller bottle is also going to help your skin. Um, I'm going to interrupt you just for a yeah. second, but I remember learning about um, how the fetus is developed and there's only a certain number of uh, types of cells when the fetus is developing and the same types of cells that make your brain also make your skin. Mm, so it's awesome. not uh, surprising to me that Tara would say this particular oil is good for your skin, but it's also good for your brain. And bergamot is a very soothing, uh, calming oil. We have a, a blend uh, that our doTERRA team has put together. I think Kathy put this together. We call it the badass blend, and it's bergamot and balance together. Nice. 
And so we can see um, bergamot specifically is suggested. You can diffuse, you can put it on that occipital point, that top point that we talked about right in the center there, right below where you feel the bone of your head, of your skull, the occipital bone. And then you can put on the bottoms of your feet. Um, you can put it on the, the actual bottoms of the two big toes, or you can just honestly put it on the probably the whole bottoms of your feet. Julia was really great in, um, in informing me that we have, what, 2,000 pores on the bottoms of your feet. I, I could totally be wrong with that number, but I had no idea. Um, so bottoms of your feet, as we all know, is really, really amazing. And the bottoms of those top two toes, bottoms of those two big toes is amazing. Um, We'll jump down. Let's go to the next page. Everyone has this page they can keep and reference to. And you want to go to let's, let's go to memory. This memory. What are the second? Yeah, this yeah. one. Okay. We're going to jump to that memory and aging on the bottom of the page. That's dealing with that temporal lobe. Just jump the top. Okay. And we're yeah, we're going to wrap up here. That <clears throat> temporal lobe, the hippocampus, is what's uh, involved in memory. And so when we deal with the aging brain, Julie was really great. She said, anyone over 50 should be on DDR prime. DDR prime is for oxidative stress. Um, all of this I think should be on everyone as we age or just as a whole, our brains are aging every day, honestly. So we have, um, you can do a blend of frankincense, peppermint, clove, clary, sage, and lemon. Um, frankincense is great topically, aromatically, internally. You can put that under the drop of your tongue um, one to two times a day. If you had a headache on top of all of this, you can put it to the top of your mouth like Wendy has suggested, which is an amazing application. Great, right? And it also gets right up into that brain immediately. Yep, that's a great one. Um, under the healthy brain, we talk about essential oil cellular complex, um, probiotics, and that um, whole food source of vitamin and minerals. And let's see, we're going to just maybe jump to the back for just a couple last ones and then we'll wrap up. We'll do that. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So on the bottom, you can see post-combat wellness. Um, a lot of people that have dealt with certain traumatic events in their life then deal with PTSD, which causes very physical presentations. And all of that seems to stem back to that initial trauma and the memories stored in the brain and the reactions and the triggers that are associated with that. Um, this one deals with anger. Um, moody, frustrated, and agitated, and no idea of that post-combat wellness. It has that bergamot, again, patchouli, my favorite, sandalwood, Siberian fir, vetiver, ylang, ylang. A lot of the oils we deal with for sleep, excuse me, um, are all in this section. You have juniper berry, which is mm -hmm. great for night terrors and nightmares. Juniper berry is great for that. Um, and then you see that frankincense, lavender, neroli, melissa. And we can do a frankincense, juniper berry, lavender, Siberian fir, vetiver blend. And those actually are all oils that I deal with for nightmares and night terrors and sleep issues. So, um, ylang ylang harmonizes and soothes. You can put that on your pulse points as needed and um, bottoms of your feet. And so on the bottom there, if you guys want to try these, let me know if you like them. Diffuser blends for the brain specifically. You have a Mind Zen, a recovery blend, a Happy Home diffuser blend, which is bergamot. I would do Roman chamomile, orange and sea tansy. Yeah. And, um, and I would say that if you know somebody that's dealing with stress and anxiety and overwhelm, I think probably the first place that I would send them would be to the Lifeline Vitality Pack mm -hmm. um, just to get that nutritional component 
uh, stable and to help them slowly detoxify their gut with the milk thistle that's in the CRS Plus. And then I would have that person explore my bag of oils and just see what's going to resonate with, with her rather than me making a suggestion. I think right. I can empower them mm -hmm. to be able to do it. The other thing that I know about people that deal with overwhelm is they don't want a lot of choices. <laughs> right. It's so, overwhelming. Yeah, it is overwhelming. So you want to make sure that maybe you're just showing them the emotional aromatherapy kit mm -hmm. um, or picking from the oils that you see on Tara's handout. Mm -hmm. um, if you know specifically what they're dealing with, and maybe just pull out a few. Um, so it, I find that with people that I work with that yeah. have a lot of stress. There's so many decisions that we make every day. You know, you go to the grocery store and you have to figure out if you want a, a paper receipt or an emailed receipt. Like all those yeah. things just get really yeah. overwhelming for people. <laughs> Um, well, so thank you so much for that great class. I'm just going to reach across from you, um, and I'm going to stop share. So we've got these um, handouts, and I hope that you'll uh, look, take another good look at them. And we're here to answer any questions. You can find us on the online oil camp. You can also just text, send me a text. I'm happy to talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, this is the last night of uh, the six-week series that we've had. I know, isn't that amazing how quick it went by? Linda, I love your haircut. It looks adorable. Um, I'm going to take a few mm -hmm. weeks off because I'm going to be visiting my mom uh, next week. She's going to have a shoulder replacement surgery. I'm not quite sure how they do that, but that's what she's dealing with. And so um, I'm going to be going to Florida on Tuesday. For those of you that are my Melt Method people, I'm going to be offering Melt Method on Zoom in March. So I'll be sending out an email. And if you'd like to participate in that, I'd love to do that with you. So I'll be teaching Zoom from Florida. Uh, I'm also doing a leadership training for doTERRA uh, in San Diego, uh, the 17th to the 21st. So there's another week that I wouldn't be around for oil camp. So it looks like oil camp looks like it's going to start again on March 26th. I have lots of ideas for oil camp. I think we could do more on this brain business if you're mm -hmm. interested. Um, but other ideas I have are do-it-yourself beauty hacks, respiratory support, thinking about allergy season. Um, I taught a class that Tara came to perfumes and chocolates. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe that would be fun to do together. Um, I can show you how to make chocolates and then it's a make and take so you can get your oils and rollerballs and make some perfume. And I have uh, labels for that for your rollerballs. Um, Tara and Julie and I have taught pet care classes, and I thought maybe it'd be nice to do a pet care basics if anybody's interested in that. Uh, cooking with essential oils. I think I put that on my list. Hi, Amanda's tongue is so cute. Oh, love it. Um, and I always talk about doing a cooking class, but I have that again on my list here. Uh, and I didn't ask Julie, but I thought maybe she could show us how to make bath bombs. Mm. How about that? Like bath bombs, bath salts, and bath sprays. Uh, and then Ramona, who taught our chakra class, um, she's going to teach a class on hydration and give us some really great ideas on ways to get more fluid into the body. We both said today that in the wintertime, we just don't drink enough water. So yeah. there's Julie like, oh yeah, I got to drink more water. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have uh, any ideas for things that they would like to talk about or learn more about? Don't be shy. Can you do something on like um, stuff for surviving like the outdoors during summer, like sunscreens, bug sprays, stuff like that? Yeah, or absolutely. like bug bite help? <laughs> like for hiking and camping, that kind of thing? Yeah. Okay, well, for hiking and camping. Mm -hmm. And would you want that during the next six week series or do you think that's more like a, a May, June kind of a thing? Uh, maybe during the next one, just to get prepared. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Do you want to help me teach that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I just threw it out and, and I hooked her in. Okay. Back in. <laughs> okay, that's a great idea. I love that. Mm -hmm. I got your name down and everything. Okay, Amanda. Okay, anybody else have any ideas? Anything that we've done in the past that you'd like to do again? Anything that you did with a live, in a live class, like the chocolates and perfume class was so much fun. What is that, Linda? A fish. A fish. All right. You wanna, 
I what think that? that I would love a roll. She will reel in the fish. Oh, down. reel her in. I caught a big one. Yeah. I think that <laughs> I would like to do, a, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, um, like the 50 minute or 50 second facial, like skin. With the melt method? Mm -hmm. Oh. I think that if, if anyone has some melt balls on hand, um, we can do a little quick pick me up of the face I or like, like spring and face. Yeah. So, so I do that facelift and then I put the tightening serum on. Yeah. So I get everything lifted. And it's really and great stick, for stick like right there. headaches and stuff too. Okay. So we'll consider that. Over there. Anybody else? Julie, do you have any ideas for what you want to do for the next series? I know I'm kind of throwing you out there, but any ideas for the next series? Oh, you're, can you unmute yourself? We're unmuting. Hi, baby. We're unmuting. Okay, there she is. Uh, probably yeah. the next series, um, I would do garden. Okay, good. And That's outside cool. living, outdoor living and that kind of stuff. For the next one. But what, what about for this one? You're cool with the bath bombs? Uh, yeah, bath salts, because bath salts are easy to do. Um, whipped body butters. Okay, so oh, whipped we'll body like butters are always fun. Yeah. Do it yourself. Yeah, but salts we could do right on the on the screen. Okay, do it yourself spa line. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put right. you down. That's April second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do it yourself spa line. Okay, so we've got some ideas. I want to thank you so, so much. It's so great to see everybody on the call tonight. And Bob is visiting with us all the way from Tucson. All right, Hi, with the snow. Or that was Scottsdale. Scottsdale. Scottsdale got the snow. Yeah. And so nice to see you, Teresa. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. Love thank to you all. Bye. Take care of yourselves, okay? See you soon. Bye. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay.